Hello guys, welcome to episode 17 of our access control explanatory series. In this episode, we are going to go over the AC20 use of our standard system. But as always, a free way to support the channel is by hitting the subscribe button to help grow the channel if you haven't done so already. And I appreciate the support. And also do hit the like button and the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload new videos. Thank you and let's get started. The use of a standard system control ensures that organization establishes terms and conditions consistent with any trust relationship established with other organization owning, operating, and or maintaining external information systems. This control prohibits unauthorized connection to the system. This control also monitors the use of external information system to detect and respond to unauthorized connections or unauthorized use. It also documents for each external connection, the interface characteristics, security requirements, and the nature of the information communicated. This control is selected for all the three baseline in the REV4, 853 REV4. As we can see, it has been selected for all the three baselines, the low baseline, the moderate baseline selected with some few enhancements and also the high baseline with some few enhancements as well. In, in the 853 REV5, it is also selected for all the three baselines, the low, moderate, and the high baseline. Now let's look at the control requirement explanation in 853 REV5 for AC20. AC20, use of external systems, the control, A, select, one or more, establish assignment, organization defined terms and condition, identify assignment, organization defined control asserted to be implemented on external systems, consistent with the trust relationship established with other organizations, owning, operating, and or maintaining external systems, allowing authorized individuals to, one, access the system from external systems and process, store, or transmit organization control information using external systems or prohibit the use of assignment, organizationally defined types of external systems. Now let's look at the discussion. External systems are systems that are used by but not part of the organizational systems and for which the organization has no direct control over the implementation of required controls or the assessment of control effectiveness. External systems, including personally owned systems, components or devices, privately owned computing and communication devices in commercial or public facilities, system owned or controlled by non-federal organization, systems managed by contractors, and federal information systems that are not owned by, operated by, or under the direct supervision or authority of the organization. External systems also include system owned or operated by other company within the same organization and systems within the organization with different authorization boundaries. Organizations have the options to prohibit the use of any type of external system or prohibit the use of specified types of external systems. Example, prohibit the use of any external system that is not organizationally owned or prohibit the use of personally owned systems. For some external system, that is system operated by other organization, the trust relationship that has been or that have been established between those organizations and originating organization may be such that no explicit terms and conditions are required. When further by saying system within these organization may not be considered external. These situations occur when, for example, there are pre-existing information exchange agreements, either implicit or explicit, established between the organization or component, or when such agreements are specified by applicable laws, executive orders, directives, regulations, policies, and standards. Authorized individuals include organizational personnel, contractors, or other individuals with authorized access to organizational systems and over which organizations 
have the authority to impose specific rules of behavior regarding system access. Restriction that organizations impose on authorized individuals need not be uniform, as the restriction may vary depending on trust relationships between organizations. Therefore, organizations may choose to impose different security restrictions on contractors than on state, local, or tribal government. It went further by saying external systems used to access public interfaces to organizational systems are outside the scope of AC20. So if your system has the requirement to be able to, you know, service the public by allowing public to actually access the interface, which is public facing, AC20 does not affect that kind of a system. All right, so this control actually has a lot uh, about five enhancements. So we have enhancement number one that limits on authorized use. Enhancement number two, portable storage devices, restricted use. Now we have number three, non-organizationally owned system, restricted use. Number four, network accessibility storage devices, prohibited use. And then the last one here is use of external systems, portable storage devices, prohibited use. Now let's look at the control requirement simplification. This control is to make sure that only authorized and trusted systems and organizations are able to access the organizational networks, systems, and data. What are some of the benefits of use of external systems? This control focuses on secure use of external information system. It allows organizations to monitor and control connections to external systems, implement additional security measures when using such systems, document the detail of external connections and ensure the protection of information during processing and transmission. Now let's look at the control assessment approach. As usual, to ensure this control is in place and functioning as intended, that is the design and functional or the operational effectiveness, we do the following. We obtain an examine the SSP and the access control policy and procedure, the dash one control to review the organization policy detailing the entities that the organization permit to access the organizational networks, systems, and data. Obtain a copy of the SLA, the Memorandum of Understanding, Interconnection Security Agreement between the connecting agency or entity and the concerned organization. And finally, ensure the document re requires the entity to meet the organizational defined security measures. Because if they are connecting to your system, you have to come up with your SLA, that is the service level agreement, the memorandum of understanding or memorandum of agreement, as well as the interconnection security agreement. You spell everything, all the security measures, all the security requirement, everything that, you know, you need to put out there before an external entity connects to your system or you connect to the external entity and share data, you need to be able to spell all the details in the SLA, the MOU, and then the ISA. And uh, also for the most part, this control, when you are assessing this control, a lot of time when there is uh, an interconnection between the system that you are assessing, this control will be referenced in CA3. A lot of time the assessors will not test the control here for AC20. They will say C or reference CA3, whereby they will actually do the, the, the testing for the interconnection itself, right? And then they will examine all the connection between the, all the systems. So nine times out of 10, this control might not be assessed, you know, with, within the AC family. In the assessment spreadsheet, you know, all the test cases, a lot of time the assessors will refer or we refer back to CA3 and see CA3 for detail of the assessment regarding system interconnections. That is what you see for the most part. And a lot of time to this control might not be applicable if your system has no interconnections with any other system within the network or within your boundaries. All right, that's it for this episode and for this control. Our next episode will be on AC21 information sharing. Please do like, subscribe, share, and comment.
so the YouTube algorithm would expose these videos to lots of people who could benefit from these videos as well. I do appreciate your support. If you have new here, please remember to subscribe to help grow that channel. Remember, keep chasing your greatness and never stop believing in yourself. Thank you and I will see you in our next episode. Thank you.